This is my fourth video lesson for Unit 15. In this lesson, we'll be naming saturated hydrocarbons. Go to page 15 in the class packet. Motivation. How would you write the chemical name of this compound? Let's start with counting the number of carbons in the longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Since there are 7 carbons in the longest chain, by using table P, the name of the longest chain will be heptane since these are all single bonds. What other information would we need to name this molecule? Notice that this molecule has some branch groups. These branch groups are different from each other. This branch is two carbons. This branch is one carbon. Also, we need to count how many branch groups there are. There are four branch groups. And we need to indicate where the branch groups are in this molecule. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to name saturated hydrocarbons. Home will be number four, which will be a junipod based off this lesson. We're first going to go over the procedure on how to name saturated hydrocarbon. We're going to look at this example. The first step is to figure out the parent chain. The parent chain is the main or longest carbon chain. We're going to identify the parent chain in this example. The parent chain is 7 carbons long. The next step is to identify the substituent. Substituent is a group of atoms, not hydrogen, that is on the parent chain. So let's identify the substituent on this example. There are four substituents in this molecule. Carbon substituents cannot be at the end carbons because if it was, then it will be part of the parent chain. To name a carbon substituent, you have to change the ending from A to L. For example, methane, which is one carbon substituent, is called a methyl group. And ethane, which is a two carbon substituent, is called an ethyl group. How about propane substituent? It is called propyl group. So in this molecule, there is one ethyl group and three methyl groups. So the first step is always to find the parent chain first. So here we have a carbon skeleton of this molecule. The first step is to find the parent chain. So the parent chain is 7 carbon, which is the longest possible chain. Here's a common wrong way of finding the parent chain. You want to avoid a branch containing a branch. Since the parent chain is 7 carbon, the name of the parent chain is heptane. In the next page of your packet, take a moment to highlight the parent group in these four molecules. Once you've done it, resume this video. So here are the answers. For question one, the parent group contains five carbons. So the name of this parent group is pentane. For question two, the parent chain is not two carbons long, but three carbons long. Keep in mind, carbon substituents cannot be at the end carbons. You should know from the previous PowerPoints that single bonds can rotate. Since the parent chain is three carbons long, the name of this parent group will be propane. So analyze these diagrams carefully because sometimes the parent group will not be drawn in a linear fashion. In question three, the parent chain is not five carbons long, but six carbons long. This over here is the longest chain possible. So the name of this parent chain is hexane. For question four, the longest chain is six carbons long. The parent chain is also hexane. In step 1b, if there are two possible parent chains that are the same carbon length, you want to pick the chain with the most substituents. In this example, both parent chains is seven carbons long, but this parent chain has four substituents while this parent chain has three. Therefore, this one is better. Carbon substituents are also called alkyl groups, which are carbon R groups. On page 16, take a moment to circle all possible substituents and name them. Pause the video, resume is completed. For question one, there is a methyl group. For question two, there is no substituent. For question three, there's a methyl group, and question four, there are three methyl groups. In step two, 
number each carbon in the chain, given the carbon with substituents, the lowest number possible. So here's the correct way. The methyl groups are on carbon 2, 4, and 5, and the ethyl group is on carbon 3. Here's the wrong way. Notice that the methyl groups is on carbon 3, 4, and 6, and the ethyl group is on carbon 5. This is the correct way because the carbon with substituents are at the lowest numbers possible. On page 16, take a moment to number each carbon in the chain, giving the carbons with substituents the lowest number possible in these four molecules. Try to do this yourself. Pause the video. Resume is completed. Here are the answers. In step three, prefixes are added to substituents if there are two or more of the same substituents. The prefixes used for substituents are the covalent prefixes, not the organic ones. The organic prefixes on table P are used for parent chain. In this molecule, there are three methyl groups, so the prefix for methyl will be tri. So this is 2,4,5-trimethyl. Since there's only one ethyl, there is no prefix. 2,4,5-trimethyl, 3-ethyl, represents the substituents. Heptane represents the parent chain. Here's the setup of writing out the MAME. Carbon numbers and covalent prefixes is used for substituents MAME and position. Table P is used for parent chain. Now that we got all the pieces, let's put it together. In step 4, use comma to separate the numbers. As you can see here, use hyphen to separate the number and the word. As you can see here, Place substituents in the alphabetical order, ignore the prefix, and write that parent last. E comes before M, so we write free ethyl first. We use a hyphen to separate the number and the word. Next is 245 trimethyl. And last is heptane. So this is the chemical name of this molecule. On page 16, Take a moment to name each of these molecules. Pause the video. Resume is completed. Here are the answers. So this one is 2-methylpentane. This one is propane. This one is 3-methylhexane. And this one is 2-3-4-trimethylhexane. On page 17, we're going to look at more examples. We're going to figure out the chemical name of each of these hydrocarbons. Let's look at question 1. This compound has a parent chain of three carbons. The methyl group is on carbon two. Therefore, the name of this compound is 2-methylpropane. This compound can also be written as methylpropane because the methyl group can only be on carbon two. If it's on any other carbon, it will be part of the parent chain. So either of these names will be fine. For question two, we must first identify the longest parent chain, which is four carbons. Since there is no substituents, the name of this hydrocarbon is butane. For question three, the parent chain is three carbons long. There are two substituents. Both methyl groups are on carbon two. Therefore, the name of this compound will be 2,2-dimethylpropane. The prefix di is needed because there are two methyl groups. You can also write this as dimethylpropane. Numbers are not needed because the substituents can only be on carbon two. They cannot be on the end carbons. For question four, the parent chain is four carbons long. There is one substituent, which is a methyl group on carbon two. So the name of this compound is 2-methylbutane. So why is it not 3-methylbutane? Because of rule number two, you want the number to be as small as possible. Does 4-methylbutane exist? The answer is no, because you cannot have a substituent at the end carbon. Since 3-methylbutane and 4-methylbutane do not exist, the methyl group can only be on carbon two. Therefore, 2-methylbutane can be written as methylbutane. 
Learning check number one, what is the IUPAC name of the organic compound that has the formula shown below? Pause the video, resume as completed. This compound has a parent chain of five carbons and a methyl substituent. So choice one and three are wrong. Between choice two and four depends on the numbering. You want the number to be as small as possible. So the methyl group will be on carbon 2, so the answer is choice 2, 2-methylpentane. For question 5 on page 17, the compound has a parent chain of 5 carbons. There is a methyl group at carbon 2, therefore the name of this compound is 2-methylpentane. For question 6, the carbon chain is also 5 carbons long. The methyl group is on carbon 3. Therefore, this is 3 methylpentane. Learning check number 2 Which structural formula represents 2 methylbutane? Pause the video. Resume is completed. The first step is to find the parent chain that's 4 carbons long. Choice 1 is 4 carbons long. Choice 2 is also 4 carbons long. Choice 3 is also 4 carbons long. And choice 4 is 5 carbons long. So choice 4 is wrong. Single bonds can rotate, so be careful. The molecules are not always going to be drawn in a way that is obvious, like choice 3 and choice 4. Based on the chemical main, there is only one substituent, which is the methyl group. Choice 1 and 2 have two methyl groups. Choice 3 has one methyl group, which is on the second carbon. So the best answer is choice 3. Learning check number 3. What is the IUPAC name of the organic compound that has the formula shown below? Pause the video. Resume was completed. The first step is to identify the parent chain, which is 4 carbons long, which is butane. The next step is to identify the substituents, there are two of them, so we need two numbers. Both of these substituents are methyl groups, therefore we need the covalent prefix di. The next step is to number the carbons to give us the lowest numbers possible. So both methyl groups will be on carbon 2, so the name of this molecule will be 2,2-dimethylbutane, choice free. So two numbers are needed because there are two substituents. The covalent prefix di is needed because there are the same two substituents. Try to do the rest of the questions yourself. Pause the video. Resume is completed. Here are the answers. On page 18, try to do practice number 2. Draw the following saturated hydrocarbons given the main. Pause the video. Resume is completed. Here are the answers. This concludes the video lesson. Remember to do the Junipar homework.